Praise the Lord. Welcome back, saints and seekers of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for joining me. Pray that you have a good day in the Lord today. Many blessings on your life. Well, Father, we do pray and ask you to be with us. We just give you the glory, the honor, and the praise that you deserve. We thank you for your word, for all that we glean from it each time we come to the reading, Lord. Every nugget is precious to us. Thank you. Just open our hearts and minds to hear what you have for us each time we approach your word. And uh, we just pray in this world right now, Lord, we pray for Israel. We pray for the peace of Jerusalem. We thank you for your hand on all the world events, Lord. We know that you are sovereign over all. And uh, we know that you can bring divine turnaround that nothing is impossible with God. We pray over the poor, the needy, Lord, the homeless, the hurting. And uh, we just ask that you undertake, Lord, for those that feel desperate today, that as they turn their hearts to you and they call on you, you would perform those needed miracles for them, Father. In Jesus' name, we pray and ask that you bless each listener of your word now, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Second Corinthians chapter 2. You remember in uh, 1 Corinthians, Paul by letter told the people how to deal with a man who had uh, fallen into immorality and was unrepentant. And uh, they were to put him out of the church. They were to shun him. And um, But in chapter 2 of 2 Corinthians, he writes back to them to restore this person. So maybe he has heard there has been repentance, etc. So in the first chapter, he was defending his apostleship. And uh, he's uh, hoping that when he comes to them, he can come in joy instead of this. uh, There's some tensions between him and this church at the moment because he has had to scold them pretty good and uh, they're not really wanting to receive that completely so uh, we all have to mature in the Lord we have to learn obedience and just through the years you know uh, church is that I was in you know sometimes you would have an evangelist come through and hit pretty hard and uh, then the the next time he came through, there might be some people that didn't that were regulars at service that didn't show up, so you could see who wasn't receiving that person, and of course we're all supposed to be mature enough to handle the chastisement, and uh, chapter two, for Second uh, Corinthians chapter two, let's read it. But I determined this with myself, that I would not come again to you in heaviness. So Paul's not wanting to come to their church with all this big heavy burden being there. For if I make you sorry, who is he then that maketh me glad? But the same which is made sorry by me. So it's like we're not going to have a good time together unless we get through this. Verse 3, And I wrote this same unto you, lest when I came I should have sorrow from them of whom I ought to rejoice, having confidence. I've got to adjust, excuse me. Having confidence in you all, that my joy is the joy of you all. For out of much affliction and anguish of heart, I wrote unto you with many tears, not that you should be grieved, but that you might know the love which I have more abundantly unto you. But if any have caused grief, He hath not grieved me, but in part, that I may not overcharge you all. Sufficient to such a man is this punishment which was inflicted of many. So now he's referencing that man that they had uh, been told to shun. And he was in fornication with his stepmother. So it was serious, and uh, he was not repenting of it. Verse 7 so that contrariwise ye ought rather to forgive him and comfort him, lest perhaps such a one should be swallowed up with overmuch sorrow. 
Wherefore, I beseech you that you would confirm your love toward him. For to this end also did I write that I might know the proof of you, whether ye be obedient in all things. To whom ye forgive anything, I forgive also. For if I forgave anything, to whom I forgave it, for your sakes forgave I it in the person of Christ. Lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. You know that, um, I guess an example of this is um, <clears throat> something that I had trouble with with somebody one time. I felt like it was righteous anger, and I believe it was at first, but I wasn't letting go of that anger, and the Lord doesn't want us sitting in anger, does he? And uh, one morning as I was getting up, the Lord spoke to me and said, it's not righteous anger, it's critical judgment. So, you know, there's a time where you have to let go of things. And uh, what I'm saying is I was right to be angry about what I was angry with, but to keep it and continue in it and not forgive, uh, it became something else. Now it was critical judgment. So that's what he's saying. You know, Satan has many devices, so oh, they were right to shun this person. But it can turn into something else if it keeps going. There needs to be that forgiveness because we are told to forgive, aren't we? But again, we can't let um, things that are so against God be in the church it will spread it's like the the yeast thing that goes through the church and you can't let that kind of sin go through the church but anyway the man must have repented because uh, paul is now writing to forgive him uh, they must have wrote to him and said well we've we've forgiven him and he's saying well if you forgave him um, i'm forgiving him too so he's just said, lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. Furthermore, when I came to Troas to preach Christ's gospel, and a door was opened to me, unto me of the Lord, I had no rest in my spirit, because I found not Titus my brother, but taking my leave of them, I went from thence into Macedonia." Now thanks be unto God, which always causes us to triumph in Christ and maketh manifest <coughs> the savor of the knowledge by us in every place. For we are unto God a sweet savor of Christ in them that are saved and in them that perish. To the one... We are the savor of death unto death, and to the other the savor of life unto life. And who is sufficient for these things? For we are not as many which corrupt the word of God, but as of sincerity, but as of God. In the sight of God speak we in Christ. So Paul's just still defending his uh, being a messenger of God, He's not corrupting the word of God. He's bringing it in sincerity. And they need to receive it from him. So praise God. Praise God for forgiveness when we have failed so horribly. I've failed horribly in my life. And I'm so thankful for the mercy of God. And uh, sometimes other people cannot forgive us even when they... No, I think that the Lord has forgiven us, but we're just all human down here, and we're just dealing with things. We want to make sure that we're ready for the return of the Lord. However, we want to show mercy. The Lord says he will show mercy to those who show mercy. So we've just got to hear from the Lord about how to deal with things. You know, there's a, I've had to... Uh, pull back from people who wanted to stay in sin because we just can't have fellowship with people all the time, a close fellowship when they are in sin. We have to be around people to preach the gospel that are in sin. We were in sin. Thank God somebody talked to us that knew the Lord. 
thank God somebody that really knew the Lord began to pray for us and care about our souls. I know my mother-in-law prayed for me, and uh, I was interested to know God, but I just, uh, I needed somebody praying to help those blinders come off and to break the bonds of sin that had such a hold on me. And uh, that's what we are to do. We are to pray for those that we see that are bound by sin. Uh, not, we don't write them off. We uh, pray. We ask the Lord to get hold of their hearts to turn them from darkness into his marvelous light. Well, if you happen to stop by and you haven't given your heart to the Lord, today is the day of salvation. Jesus Christ is the only way to the Father, the only way to heaven. No one's going to come up any other way. Anything else that people hold up as a God is an idol. It is a false God. Jesus is the Lord. So obey Acts 2.38 if you need to. And um, pray for our world. Pray for our souls, our families, the lost. Uh, we need people to turn. Now, we do not want them to perish. We are in agreement with Jesus. It's, we do, it's not God's will that any perish, so that should be our will and agreement with him. We don't want people to perish. We want them to be saved. I love you. Jesus loves you more. Be blessed.